you uh, you've mentioned his main name a few times, and uh, and I'm going to jump down here and I want to talk a little bit about Dave Meltzer. He recently responded uh, to you on so on something, and uh, I want to know what you think of Dave and uh, his impact on pro wrestling. Let me start here, uh, and I haven't said anything about this. I have no personal problem with Dave Meltzer, none. In fact, a lot of what I learned about the behind the scenes. Uh, workings of the professional wrestling business and let's call it uh, the deeper fandom that follows everything. I call it the wrestling bubble, you know, the smart mark crowd. I learned a lot of that from being a subscriber to the Wrestling Observer. Dave was fully aware that I was a subscriber and at different times we kind of ran into each other, including I think once at Cauliflower Alley. So there was no but. I'd occasionally see, and you can imagine me, you know, 15 years ago, reading the Wrestling Observer, and he would report something about me, but he knew where to find me. So I would be like, and I'd reach out to him and say, why don't you just call me? Once, for example, this is before I went to TNA, there was a rumor that I was going to be the big money investor that was going to come in and save TNA when Dixie was having some money problems. Dave Meltzer wrote in there, Billy Corgan doesn't have the resources or the finances to take over TNA. Okay. Number one, wrong. Number two, he didn't ask me. Number three, where did he get his information from? Not from you. <laughs> Not from me. Yeah. And I wrote him and I said, now remember, I have no hostility against the guy. I said, Dave, why the F? Don't you just ask me, and by the way, I, I, I might have tweeted it even because I was mad, but I said, why don't you just ask me? And by the way, you're wrong. You're wrong. I have a lot more money than you think I do because Dave doesn't know anything about the music business. Here's a fun fact about me. I own all my songs. In the music business, if you own your songs, you're worth a lot more than if you don't own your songs. I, I, I was lucky and I had a great lawyer when I was young who said, you need to own your songs. I didn't know what that meant. She protected me at that time. And my, my value in the world has everything to do with me owning my song catalog. And if anybody saw like last year's Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special, there's one of my songs. Right. Anybody saw the new Dracula movie coming out, there's one of my songs. If anybody saw the rock movie where it was like against a, a King Kong type thing, there's one of my songs. Well, then you get paid on all that stuff. Okay, so it, moving on. So I knew from personal experience that Dave would routinely report things as fact that he would not fact check me on. When I entered the professional wrestling business, that trend continued. So I watched repeatedly and I would email Dave at different times and say, why don't you just ask me, at least have me say, no comment, you're wrong, or here's the truth. So now when I see, and I have to laugh, when I see Dave Meltzer wrestling journalist in sports illustrated i laugh because if you're a journalist you check your sources <laughs> you don't rely on one mark right. yeah. who calls you and trades gossip for you so you give them a five-star review mm. now let's talk about the recent thing okay dave Meltzer has created a world where he's in heaven because AEW is his sort of spiritual embodiment of what he always told everyone that wrestling needed to be. Great. Dave Meltzer has very little interest in the NWA. You know who I know? Because he doesn't really cover it much. He sort of treats it as, as a side thing. Okay. If I sound uh, hostile to the idea, of course I am because Absolutely. I'm in people. Yeah. I'm running with my own money, the oldest wrestling brand in the world. I'm putting on pay-per-views. I'm trying to sell stuff. It would be helpful. Yes, of course. I'm being transparent. It would be helpful if somebody like Dave Meltzer gave it some level of respect. Now, if he doesn't like the product, cool, say it. But he's generally chosen not to cover what we're doing, I think, because he doesn't really respect what I'm doing. That's okay, too. So let's just say that was, that was all there is to it. Fine. You can't find me out there complaining about Del Dave Meltzer in public because he runs his business, I run mine. He doesn't owe me anything, and I don't owe him anything. But I said something the other day in an interview, and I was joking, okay? 
And if it if it hurts, good. I I refer to Tyrus not wanting to put on a five star Meltzer jerk off match. <laughs> now stop for a second. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you. It means in my mind that when he sees a five star match that he likes with two guys from Japan or two guys from AEW, he jerks off to it. That's what it means. It's a joke. It's a joke. He's yeah. jerking off to the match because right. that he's in heaven. He's in wrestling heaven. Right. Okay. If that's disrespectful or it's, it's a little too stiff, okay, fine. Now, what did he do? He fires back and he basically implies that I don't like high-level workers. And he quotes like Omega versus this. He even mentions Drew. Drew, I don't, what's his name in WWE? I can never remember. Uh, Drew, um, Drew, McIntyre. Drew, Drew McIntyre. That's it. Yep. Okay. Buddy, I was at Drew's wedding. And who was I sitting next to? Seamus and Fit Finley. You telling me I don't appreciate a good Seamus and Drew Drew McIntyre slash Galloway match? Are you kidding me? What did I just say when we started this thing? I watched Kurt Angle go out and create magic in the ring. You think I didn't appreciate a great 20-minute Kurt Angle match? Right. I was drooling. It's like wrestling heaven. And then he then he goes on to imply that I I would be lucky to have anybody uh, anybody that on that list in my promotion. Of course I would. Who wouldn't want a great worker in their promotion? Yeah. By the way, I don't have a billion dollars. <laughs> so he made it personal. Now maybe he thought I was being personal. Okay, so he, he hits me back. But he 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 makes up a fact that I didn't say. You know what I'm saying? And again, we're back to Dave Meltzer, wrestling journalist. Mm -hmm. He's just making something up. So that's the problem. So here's the here's the finish on it. I wrote something where I said, I'm not going to bow down to the god of wrestling criticism. I don't care. You can rate every NWA match with one star. You have bias. You, Dave Meltzer, you, you have told the world the wrestling that you like. Great. You may have decided that the NWA style is something for a, a history book from 40 years ago. Great. You may decide that what I'm doing with the uh, the NWA isn't worthy. Great. I don't have any problem with that. No. Just don't make up stuff about me. If you're going to be called a wrestling journalist, be a wrestling journalist. By the way, Dave Meltzer has my email. He could email me. He doesn't email me. That easy. He's you're right. right on Twitter. Yeah, blast it to everyone. Do you know that this journalist, I don't know if you've heard this or not, Billy, the guy that you talked about at the beginning of the show, Kurt Angle, who this is named after. You know, he has never, he never gave Kurt Angle a five-star match. Have you heard that before? Never. Well, it's like the Grammys. I think the Grammys never gave the Beatles a Grammy Award. What does that tell you? Right. I mean, come on. He didn't wrestle in AEW, and he didn't wrestle in Japan enough, apparently. So, there you go. My response to Dave, which was very measured, and I tried to be an adult, right, was to say, look, I'm not afraid of you. There's a lot of people who are afraid of you because they don't want to get, you know, the, the, the melts or whatever. And press, yeah. I, I've been in the public life for 35 years. I'm not afraid of Dave Meltzer. I'm not afraid of the writer from Rolling Stone. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm out here to represent the NWA, right? I love talking to you, but I'm here to promote my brand, sure. right? That's I want right. people to watch pay-per-views. So if you want to be a fair arbiter of the truth, great. If you want to be critical, no problem. But you want to play this like weird game where you're winning and everybody else is losing and you're the smart guy and nobody else knows wrestling like you do. Wrestling historian, I'll give him that all day. The guy's knowledge of history is great. His opinion, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. His, his opinion over time, and I think what's happened in the last five years has gone to his head. And the success of his brand, which is admirable, has gone to his head. He thinks he's the god who decides what is and isn't worthy. And you're and you're bringing up him never giving Kurt a five star match is a perfect example of that. Right. There are a lot of great workers in this business who are not the type of wrestler that Dave Meltzer jerks off to. Okay. Right. Okay. I love it. That's totally fine, but. Let's go back to Jerry Blackwell and Adrian Adonis, guys who drew money. 
A lot of people that Dave Meltzer doesn't like draw money. What is this business about? Drawing money? Right. Putting butts in seats, drawing money. You got it. And if he wants to criticize me for not drawing enough money, great. Go ahead. I wish I was drawing more money. I wish we were selling more stuff. Let, 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 let's out there. There's nothing yeah. to be afraid. I'm not a. My point is, is I'm not afraid of this conversation. There's a yeah. frustration there with this guy who's anointed himself the Pope, and I don't mean the, the Pope from TNA and, <laughs> and NWA. Right. Somehow he's become the Pope. I don't get it. 